Welcome on in. It's Betting Weekly Game Bet Match, the second podcast YouTube show of the week. I'm Nigel Seeley, your host over in London, a sunny London, and I'm glad to say joining me uh, over in Spain, over across the Mediterranean uh, at the tennis this week in Mallorca is our senior ATP Tour handicapper. Also in the sunshine, it's Sean Calvert. Good morning to you, Sean. How are you doing? How's your trip? Good morning. This is it's early, this. This is 11 a.m. Mallorca time. I'm not quite in the full, the full flow today. You know, I'm more of an evening and afternoon man, but... Uh, Trip's good, mate. Yeah, uh, sun is out today. Uh, it's been a bit, a little bit cloudy the last couple of days, but when the sun does come through the clouds, it's it's really, really hot. But of course, of course, when I'm away, you can absolutely guarantee that it's beautiful over in London. So I guess it's uh, business as usual. But uh, yeah, it's good. It's, uh, the trip's good. The uh, tennis is good. A little busy for my liking yesterday. If I'm being picky, um, you know, I like to have the entire section to myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> There was quite a lot in yesterday for Munar. There was more in for Jamie Munar yesterday than there was for Feliciano Lopez's last match last year, which uh, can't be uh, can't be a good reflection on Lopez. But uh, yeah, all good, mate. So far, I mean, the, the picks are doing well as well. So yeah, good, good. Yeah, good day yesterday. The leans cash in. The overs went in. The uh, bit of a struggle for our pick Kichikata. Struggled a yeah. little bit, but he covered the spread in the end. Did you watch that match? I watched some of it. There's a there's a, a cafe around the corner. I'll I'll give him a name check. It's called Tony's cafeteria uh they've got 400 meg internet in there so i was i was watching it on stream on my phone on there because i was just waiting for for lagan and natasha to, to go away for their flight back home um so yeah beautiful seamless streaming unlike my hotel where i've got to stream it off my my uh my mobile connection but uh yeah i did see you gotta it get down tony's you got to get down I could, tony's i could have it down tony's but it's a bit noisy it's on a roundabout and there's there's obviously people firing around left, right and centre, talking and doing orders and general cafe noise might have been a bit tricky. I could try it, but it's, it's a bit of a risk. But um, yeah, so anyway, getting back to the original point. Yes, I saw in Jakarta. Yes, it was a struggle. We'll talk about him again in a little bit, but he's through. So that's that's all good. And, and Jordan Thompson's out of that section as well. So yeah, pretty good day yesterday overall. It was a good day indeed. Uh, just one thing you mentioned there about the the crowds at tennis matches. I mean, I've been to a, not as many as I did last year, but I've been to a few tennis tournaments this year, and every one seems to be busy. The popularity of tennis seems to be getting more more the ticket sales. It's harder to get tickets. You go online when the tickets go on sales. You know, I mean, we struggled for the US Open this year; yeah. they went straight away. Other tickets are really, really hard to get by. They're sell, selling out very, very quickly. So. It does seem to be busier at these tennis tournaments than it has been over the last couple of years. You can always get ten- tickets for Mallorca. I mean, it's, it's, that's not a problem. But uh, it, there was definitely more there yesterday. I don't know whether it was because I went later in the day. I normally go sort of early for the first matches and then kind of leave before the end. Because um, you've got to get a shuttle bus. I, I think I, I did it on Instagram yesterday. I've done it on Instagram numerous times. You have to get a shuttle bus up the hill um, and a shuttle bus back down. And obviously the bus only takes what 50 people or whatever so if you're if you're leaving at the end with everybody else it's <laughs> that's going to be a problem but um generally earlier in the day in Mallorca there's nobody there so I'm hoping for that's going to be the same again today uh let's have a look at the matches in Mallorca Sean will be heading across to the tennis venue a little bit later on today you can follow him on our socials at because we win on Instagram and on social media on Twitter as well uh, he'll be giving you some in-play picks and some videos across there of his day out I put me back out yesterday Sean as well I'm getting old again, again. I'm doing the bed and I yeah put me back out doing the bed I'm in agony today I absolute agony but anyway I see you've uh, got the your show must go on, on. the eight what's that the 82 82. I've got, I've got, I've got two 1990 tops. Number one, number three. Last year's top. This year's top. A bit of 82 and a bit of 86. So, is that the original uh, more, from 82? No, no. Nah, nah, this is the. This is not the original. One. I had one it, of them. It's, it was Admiral, wasn't yeah. it? The 82 one, I think. Oh, yeah. I yeah, had one was, of them, but it was, it's, uh, it's gone. Brian Robson, Paul Mariner, Tony Woodcock. Yeah, Brian Robson, of course, West Brom before he went to Man Brian United. Robson. Good, good team. But uh, obviously, the, the, the coverage of Euro 2024 is extensive here um, because we on Betting Weekly Studios and because we win. Uh, the guys, including myself, are putting on some great content for you to head across and watch that. England are in action tonight, and that's what I'm doing. I'm filming this early so I can go out and meet. I'm, you know, I'm meeting tonight one of our biggest fans, Joe DeFan. I thought you were about to say you're going to meet Brian Robson. Robson or someone else from the 82. No, 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 no. no. Joe DeFan's Joe coming DeFan. in. He's over in London, and uh, a few of the guys are going to meet him and watch some football tonight. So nice. I'm meeting Joe DeFan. So if you're in London and you're a follower of the show, you reach out to myself, we'll come and meet you. We'll have a few drinks and show you some good old English. We're taking to a sports bar in West Kensington. 
So it should be a good night. To West Kensington? What, what's, what bar is that? Then? It's called The Three Kings. And the only reason we're going there is because he's staying in Airbnb around the corner. So right, it's like okay. quite, quite a local little bit. So, yep, uh, heading Very forward nice. there. A few of the guys are going out. So it should be a good evening tonight. England hopefully win and get through. But all that tournament will be covered, as well as Wimbledon will be covered here. Anyway, it's all about today. Uh, ben Shelton against Rinchi, Rinky Hitchigasa. Hitchigasa is our pick. We just said Devi struggled in round one, but he come, come through uh, to get through this match against Nardi. Uh, Shelton is a heavy favourite, though. Minus 265. Hitchigasa is $2. The spread is three and a half, which I quite like Kitchikata, but it's very minimal price, minus 175. Uh, ben Shelton uh, giving up three and a half is plus 125. The total high, as you would expect in Shelton matches, minus 110 on the over, minus 125 on the under. They've met twice before. It's one win apiece, both back on Challenger Tours in 2022. But on grass this year, Shelton, who is a player that people might think, well, including myself, might have thought that he had the game to do well on grass. He hasn't won a match yet, which is shocking when you consider the two opponents he's played, Duckworth and the, uh, what's the, I can't even pronounce the young French kid, Mobtesh Pericard. Oh, and right? Petsy Pericard, yeah. Petsy Pericard. So he's lost their, both of their matches and this is a guy that everyone expects to do well. Not in great form. Hitchikart has come through a bit of a struggle, but he's here and he is our pick to win the tournament. So this is a must-win match for us already. We've already got the future on it. Are we going to go in again or are we going to be just sitting with the future and trying to get him through? I'll sit with the future and try to get him through. I'm I'm not convinced by Shelton yet on the grass, as you just said. Uh, doesn't look comfortable. Looks short in price today. All time on grass at main level. Shelton two five win loss. Service points one and return points one total of hundred and one. That's not as good as Ija Carter. Eight and six win loss and hundred and two for Ija Carter. I mean, he just hasn't got it so far, has he? Shelton on the grass. I don't know whether it's the movement or or whatever. He's just not comfortable with it. But he's only broken serve 8% of the time uh, on the grass, winning 31.8% of return points. So, it, it's not, it's, as you said, it's a surprise, really. It's, it's, generally, these days, people tend to get the grass a bit quicker, like, like Alcaraz is a prime example. I know he's, he's Alcaraz, but someone like Shelton, who serves the way he does, comfortable at the net, he's, he's a good mover. He's not, he's not a poor mover. Um, some people struggle with the movement on grass. Shelton shouldn't do, really. He's a great athlete. But uh, it just, it, it takes, sometimes it takes players time to get used to the grass. Some players just don't like it. I, I don't know whether that's the case with Shelton. If I was Ben Shelton and in his camp, I'd be looking at grass to be one of his strongest surfaces. You know, he should be a contender at, at, at Wimbledon, really, and Queens and all these other places. But maybe it's just taking him time to get, to get used to it. So the fact that he's only broken 8% of the time on grass so far in his career, I know it's only seven matches, but... It's got to improve. He's only won 30, 32% of return points. So just on that basis, you've got to be looking at over games because Hijikata himself has been, have been poor on breakpoint chances so far, this, this grass swing. And I watched that match, as I said, in full glorious 400 megabyte HD. Uh, Hijikata against Nardi. Four of 18 breakpoint chances he took, uh, Hijikata. And he's only taken 25% overall, this grass swing. So if Hijikata is not taking the chances... And Shelton's serving big, but he's not taking any chances either. It it just suggests overs, doesn't it? The way I would play this, I'm already on Hijikata, so I probably won't play it. But Hijikata plus three and a half games. I think you suggested that a minute ago. Um, that looks the standout play. Or over 22 and a half games. They're both around about minus 120-ish, I think. Um, not a fabulous price, really. But it does look like a whoever's going to win this is going to have to do it um, the difficult way. Going long, I would suggest. Yeah. Uh, the 23 and a half is minus one, uh, minus 110. The average 22 and a half, a little bit lower. And the three and a half Hitchikata has actually moved. It's now minus 175. So a big move okay. for Hitchikata plus three and a half. So that, uh, that looked the obvious play when the graphic, when we saw the graphic there. But on the price, minus 175, it's, it's a little bit of a line movement there. Uh, two and a half will probably be big plus money for Hitchikata, which it will be. Head across the Bet Rivers website. Two lots of different good. markets, different handicaps. Yeah, you can you can you move the toggle along, look at the different handicap markets, look at the spread markets, and choose the spread that you want to play with. But Hitchikata here, uh, given Shelton's breaking uh, pro- problems he's had here, Hitchikata serving well as well. Both of them got big serves. It's an obvious play, the overs, and it's obviously we want Hitchikata to win, and uh, it may be worth betting him plus two and a half as well at plus money rather than taking the very low money. And he's beat Shelton minus. before, of course. Yeah. They've, they've played. Yeah, he has. Yeah. So he's not going to be overawed at all by playing Shelton. Not that he probably would anyway, but knows he can beat him. He's got the better grass stats. 
you know, you certainly wouldn't be back in Shelton at that price. The, the overs or the handicap on a Jakarta, they, they do look the way to go there if you want, if you're betting in that one. Yep. The next match uh, is quite an interesting one because people will first look at Tabilo and think to yourself, you know, this is Alessandro Talbeda. I think, well, he's not, he's a South American, he's not a. He's not a natural grass court player, but his opponent, Alexander Shevchenko, had won his first ever grass court match to get to this far against Lestien. Uh, and surprisingly, maybe, looking at this price, he's thinking about the, the, the South American here. Tabilo is a heavy favourite, minus 245. But given Shevchenko's woes on grass, I can understand that. Shevchenko is plus 195. The spread is exactly the same as the Hitchikata Shelton game, three and a half. But this time around, Shevchenko is a heavy favourite, minus 141. Uh, plus three and minus three and a half. The TBO is plus one ten. The total one lower at twenty two and a half. With over minus one twenty and under minus one oh seven. Tabio is the number four seed this week, and they have met once before in Miami. Tabio won that. He lost the first set, the Chilean, and then he came back and won six one six four. Uh, over three sets uh, in Miami, where court conditions were pretty quick. Uh, it's going to be quick today. Um, Tabio, I mean, I think you mentioned in the outright show that you know he he's, he's more than capable of a little bit on grass. He can yeah. play on grass, which is a you wouldn't expect that when you see his name, you see the Chile, and you think he's a clay quarter through and through. But Shevchenko has got had some real big problems on the grass. Yeah, Shevchenko is just very inexperienced on the grass. You know, it, it may come for him in the future, but his background is is generally clay and hard courts. Mainly clay played a lot on clay and challenges, hard courts as well. Um, but Tabelo, you know, he's, he won Auckland at the start of the year, I think, if memory serves me correctly. Um, yeah. You know, it's not, it's not slow there by any means. It's a, it's a decent-paced hard court up there in Auckland. Um, Tabelo's got an obvious chance here, but the price, minus 245, um, you know, it's a bit short. You can't really be, be, be betting that. Tabelo's got the more experience on grass and a more effective serve. That lefty serve of his is, is very effective in quick conditions as well as um, on the clay. If you look at the all-time stats on this surface at all levels, it, there's, there's not much to look at with Shevchenko. As you said, he's only played three. But his service points won and return points won total is 87, which is not very encouraging. Um, played Lestien uh, the other day. On, I think it was on one of the courts that you can't see because there's one of the courts in Mallorca that you can only see if you're sat on centre court and you're sort of leaning over the rails because it's right in the middle of the club and they don't let you go down there. So you can't watch that court side. Uh, from what I can gather, Lestien led in both sets and managed to end up losing both of them. So he's got an 87 total in the games he's played so far on, on grass. Tabelo is 5-9 and nine win-loss all-time. You know, not fabulous. And a, a service points winner and 10 points one total of 97, which is not great either. But, you know, Shevchenko, he's only held serve 65% of the time in those three matches on, on grass. So not encouraging. The other sort of downside for Shevchenko is that he's two and six win loss uh, versus left handers at main level, one of which was the match against Tabolo. Uh, I think was that a main level or was that in qualies at Miami? I, either way, he's played Tabolo. No, it was main level. It was main level. It was main level. Uh, okay, so one of those, one of those two and six was was Tabolo. Then in that case, it all just points to a Tabolo win, but he is short in price. It's not the, the stats aren't they're not that good that he should be minus 245. Shevchenko's only played those three matches, so you know, the stats might be misleading. He's only broken serve twice in five sets so far on the grass this summer, Tabolo, and he's only won 40% of second serve points. So his serve's going to have to do some heavy lifting today if he's going to cover a spread here. I imagine Tabolo will probably win this one, but I don't think it's going to be easy. You know, Shevchenko will be, I think it will be very competitive here. Suspect another long one is in order. Over 22 and a half does look like uh, the play here. What's that? Minus 120, roughly, yeah, over 22 and a half for Bet Rivers. I, I would go with that. This is this is a tricky one. I think Tableau will win it, but I don't think he'll win it easily. I think Shevchenko will be competitive, so I'd, I'd, I'd go overs on this one. Just before we leave Mallorca for now, um, conditions is what you expected. You know, the court speed looks about the same. You know, you, you, there's no rebase, having seen it live, thinking what you, what you fought pre-tournament. No, it's it's still a tournament that can you can get your rewards for for uh, first strike tennis. I watched Gael Monfils yesterday. Uh, he was pretty much untouchable on serve against Dominic Team. I know the Team is you know a shadow of the player he was, unfortunately, and he can't he can't really get too many returns back in play, particularly on the backhand side. He just sort of bunts it back. But 
one fee showed, you know, you, you can, I think he won about 90 odd percent of his first serve points. You know, if you've got big serve, big strikes, you can still be very, very, very effective on this surface. It looks similar to, to, to uh, previous years. Yeah. Move across now from Mallorca to Eastbourne. Remember, head across to the Bet Rivers website. 4 a.m. start the matches in Mallorca, so nice and early. And remember, if you do have a bet on any of these matches, you can bet live and watch live on the Bet Rivers app or on your mobile device or your tablet or your home computer. Okay, let's move across to Eastbourne. Two matches we are going to discuss. Uh, both exactly the same price. Uh, the first match is Alexander Bublik uh, up against Vukic. Uh, minus 190 for Bublik here. Plus 150 for Vukic. The spread is one and a half. Uh, minus 162 for Bublik, uh, giving up the one and a half start. And so Vukic receiving the one and a half start is plus 120. Total again is 22 and a half here with over minus 121, under minus 106. Uh, Bublik, as we know, he doesn't want an early start. If he gets an early start, he's a fade. We don't know the order of play yet, but he might have. Have a little bit of a line. Uh, two and two this year on grass for Bublik. Uh, Vukic is five and four. The pair have met twice before. The last time they met was in Lyon on a clay court. Bublik won six four six two. And prior to that, they won in Adelaide, which Vukic won seven six six two. Uh, and the Australian will have some support here. Bublik, uh, very you know, this part of uh, London, this, the, the Australians have come out in force and support their players here. Uh, Vukic is the outsider, plus one fifty. Bublik minus one ninety. Uh, I think this might be a good watch this match. How do you see this one going? Yeah, I think this is a chance for Alexander Vukic. You know, I really do. He's been impressive so far, this grass swing. Beat Karen Kashanov on grass. Um, which, All right, Kashanov might not say grass is his best surface. It probably isn't. But I didn't think Vukic would hold up too well in the backhand-to-backhand battle against Kashanov, but he beat him. Only lost narrowly to Talon Greekspor as well. He should have won that match, actually, against Greekspor uh, in Rosmarlin. You know, Vukic is known for his serve, big serve, big forehand, but the backhand has held up well. He's won 59% of second serve points so far in matches against Griegsborg, Kashanov, Marijan, and Purcell, who can also play on grass. He's won 59% of the second serves against those four guys. Bublik, he hasn't fired yet this grass swing. I wonder if he's carrying an injury. He was, he was injured in Stuttgart. Uh, he's only won 45% of his second serve points uh, in the four matches he's played so far this grass swing I just wonder whether he's going to want to go deep this week before a major particularly if he's if he's carrying an injury which he he seems to have been um the last time I mean we can we can kind of ignore their clay match really neither of them particularly enjoy playing on clay to, to put it kindly but prior to that Vukic played really really well to beat Bublik in in quick conditions in Adelaide beat him in straight sets so he knows he can beat Bublik on a quick court I mean, looking again at Vukic's stats, he's held serve 93% of the time in those four matches at main level this season, which is excellent considering the, the guys that he's played. Bublik only 85% holds, still high, obviously, but not as impressive as 93 So I think what I looked at here earlier when, I, when these lines came out was the, the plus two and a half games on Vukic. That was round about 1.9 minus 1.11. One, one. Um, that that's where I'm going here. I think Vukic has got a good chance of winning this match, but I feel like the handicap is is the best play given given the st- serving stats and the stats overall of Vukic on on the grass so far this season. Yeah, always a good play when you got big servers taking the two and a half, three and a half, whatever you want to do on the handicaps. Was lots of very very tight sets, lots of tie breaks, and uh, Vukic here. Uh, plus two and a half would be Sean's play. On the graphic, it's one and a half at plus 120. But ahead across the Bet Rivers, moved a little toggle along, as I said earlier. You'll be able to get two and a half, and you'll, obviously your line will come down to around about minus 110. Uh, it's a 5 a.m. start uh, across in uh, Eastern time, that is, in Eastbourne. Not 5 a.m. for Vukic. He wouldn't be fancying that. But a little bit later well, in the day for public, him, certainly 12 wouldn't. o'clock local time. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be fancying that. Uh, next up, we have an all-British uh, affair between two players in Billy Harris and Charles Broom. Billy Harris came through yesterday in a win that we highlighted as a lean, and the price drifted. Did you see the price? It drifted even more yesterday. No. Billy Harris' price went out and out. Really? It went out really big. Um, yeah, it, it was a big, big move for him. And he won in straight uh, sets. Fernley. A lot of money. 
He won his straight sets, won convincing. And there's money already around today for Charles Broom in this match, which does surprise me. He's almost 200 places lower in the rankings than Billy Harris. Billy Harris is having a breakthrough year. Got to the quarterfinals at the Queen's Club, an ATP Tour 500 event. Charles Broom has got nowhere near the experience of that. Uh, these two are no strangers to each other. They have played seven times before. It's four wins to uh, Harris, three to Broom. They have played on grass before as well. Uh, the challenger in Nottingham uh, this year, a semi-finalist, Broom won 6-4, 6-4. That wasn't long ago. And they also won in the final last year in a Futures event, which Harris won 6-3, 7-6. Six, six. Um, I haven't really been following the, the draw and the process of the draw here, but it looks as though that Charles Broom lost in qualifying to McCabe, and now he's got a place in, in round two. I, I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Someone must have pulled out. How has he managed to get into the draw in, in the second round? Yeah, it's because, as I suggested might be the case when we did the show on, on Sunday, Tommy Paul pulled out, um, having won Queens. Right. I suspected, he, I, I did suggest that he might not show up uh, or show up not really with great enthusiasm. He didn't show up at all. So because he pulled out, Broom took, Broom's the lucky loser. Um, so Broom took Paul's place in the draw because Paul's already got a buy through to the next round. Broom's taken that buy essentially so he's a lucky loser times two if you like not only did he get yeah, through he to gets, the first he gets round second round money as well what yeah. a result got beaten yeah, qualifying great... gets second round money yeah, what that's a great. result that is well, that's a great result for him it does happen I did say Paul probably wouldn't show up it's kind of obvious suggestion really given that he's just won Queens and he's got uh, Wimbledon obviously potentially from Monday you know it's, it's, it's a it's a thing that was always likely to happen I mean this is just another match for I'm Harry pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it I'm pretty sure his girlfriend would let him out. That's a, you see, have you seen a little video of the girlfriend when he's got the trophy after the No, I, I didn't. What, what happened there? Oh, you've got to see it. It's hilarious. She's on the court and she's she's draped all over him. He's got the big trophy. She's kissing him. And really? She's telling Tamara. She's like an Instagram girl. I mean, she's she's as good as Instagram as you. She's got as many, almost as more followers. She's, you know, your, your stuff's more Instagrammable than her. I must admit. I don't know about she's, that. Uh, she's... She's she's draped all over him. She's got her arm around him, and I, I think she said, "Listen, Tommy, you, you, you're not allowed to go out for the week. We got the money. We're going shopping." That's what she read. That I could be done. the case. Oh, you got to watch it. Quite I think that's the case. It might it might be, or what, for whatever reason he isn't there, and Charles Broom is. Um, it just feels like a, a similar scenario to the Fernley match, doesn't it? Much more experience for Harris. He, he's looking comfortable at this level now. Broom, obviously, very very inexperienced. You mentioned that Broom beat Harris in the Nottingham semi-finals just over a week ago. I did say in the other Harris preview that that wasn't a surprise, really, because Harris was due to play Queen's Club like a day or two after that match. If, if Harris had won that match, he would have had to have played the Nottingham final and he probably wouldn't have got to Queen's until sort of Monday and he was playing Tuesday. So it's, it's not surprising that he perhaps put in a lesser effort there to, to favour Queen's Club over a, a Nottingham challenger final if you look at the 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 matches that they have played against each other head-to-head it's overwhelming in favor of Harris service points one and return points one 111 to Harris 89 to Broome and you know Harris does have the bigger game um he's got more weapons which is obviously key at this level 90 percent holds a serve this grass swing Harris and he's played some decent players you know Broome has only held serve 80 percent of the time and he's certainly played lesser opposition and Harris has also won nine percent more second serve points this grass swing than Broom and again having played a better quality of opposition so it, it all points to Harris again for me similar situation to the Fernley match minus two and a half is probably the way to go here minus one one eight uh that is at the minute I, I would go that's that's the way I would go here yeah Yep, there was a market move yesterday towards Harris against Fernley there's a continued market move Towards him again. Money's coming for Broom. Uh, I thought you meant there was a market uh, move towards Fernley. Yes, yeah, against Harris. There was a market move against Harris. So they were going with Fernley. There's a market move against Harris again today. So I I think the the, the betters think that uh, it's going to be a a clean-up for Broom here. (laughs) Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I would be happy for for that prize to drift out. I mean, it, it just looks... Harris to me I mean I, I'm not sure I, I obviously didn't agree with the move on for Fernley uh, I wouldn't say I agree with the move for Broome either so you know if, hold on you might get a better price but I think Harris should should edge this one yeah 
Yep. Uh, Harris, it is for us, playing very, very well at the moment, playing the best tennis of his career. Sort of come out to the end. He's not, I mean, not a youngster, 28 years of age, but he's playing the best tennis of his career so far on the grass yeah. court. So when you see that in some of these, these British players come to Wimbledon time, they did some good results on the grass. They're used to the conditions. They're used to the services, and they, they raise their game with a big opportunity to get some money as the tournament, uh, as, the, as the summer tournaments happen. A uh, little bit in pro, uh, uh, the gra- the price there. I can't really see. If you can move the graphic down a little bit, there we'll be able to see the uh, the, the returns. But uh, profit and losses minus three sixteen at the moment on the, the game bet match. But obviously yesterday we gave so many winners, but majority of them were leans. They weren't really. If anyone to vet the lean, you'd be making about thirty units profit. But uh, the the official yeah. plays are down minus three sixteen. And um, what are the official plays for tomorrow, Sean? Yeah, I'm just going to take the one I think, which is Vukic. I think that's the strongest fancy of mine. Plus two and a half games. Uh, it's going to be around about one point nine. That is uh, to beat Alexander Bublik, and that is in Eastbourne. Yeah, and if we do get that, we want an early start. We might have half a chance. We might double down on the double yeah. if we get the first match in court. It might, it might be a result. <laughs> so check out the order of play. Head across the Bet Rivers. There'll be a whole host of different markets available. You won't get a better different betting service on the tennis than they're offered by Bet Rivers. As I said, uh, follow Sean on our Instagram and our Twitter account at Because We Win. Uh, on YouTube here, we have so much content on the tennis. Wimbledon draw is Friday. We'll be doing the week, the previews for Wimbledon Championship at the weekend, as well as Euro 2024. The knockout stages start at the weekend as well so a huge weekend and a huge month of sporting action tennis and soccer cover for you here on the betting weekly studios and obviously you can also download this podcast on your preferred podcast provider betting weekly game bet match that's it for today we're back tomorrow uh, looking ahead uh, to some more matches over in Mallorca and in Eastbourne as the countdown to Wimbledon continues Sean thank you very much enjoy the sunshine don't get too burnt a lot of factor 50 on and enjoy the tennis got the 30 yeah, you're you're a bit red, don't you? You're a bit red. Up. You want to get the fifty on, mate? Get the 50 I haven't on, got any right. fifty. Never bought a fifty in my life. Get down the old super Mercado. Get down the super Mercado and get some factor fifty <laughs> ASAP. Uh, take care. That's it for today. Enjoy your day, and uh, we're off now to watch England win, qualify for the last sixteen, and have a few beers with Joe DeFan because we win's biggest fan. Take care.